So we have another weekly update uh, in regards to Outriders from People Can Fly and it talks about more changes to the game. Today we check out everything they have mentioned. How's it going guys? My name's DPJ and if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. So a couple of hours ago guys they dropped the Thursday Dev News update and in it they spoke about improvements to the anti-duplication system and more today we'll go through it all okay so let's get into it and topic for discussion anti-duplication improvements it's now been a little while since we implemented our changes to the legendary drop rate system and we are able to see on a global analytics level the beneficial impact these changes have made. Analytics also indicate that the anti-duplication system is working well across the global population. As mentioned previously, it does not guarantee that you will get a unique item with every drop but it does appear to be significantly reducing the time until players receive new uniques. There is one outstanding question that we wanted to get everyone's thoughts on. The system currently rerolls a dropped a legendary item once it identifies that you already have said item on your character, in your inventory or your stash. The system however can make it a bit harder to farm for an improved version of a particular item if you are specifically relying on the item for farming. Example, you have a death shield equipped but you want to farm to get a better death shield roll. Death Shield however is a key component of your current build which means that removing it from your character stash in order to improve its drop chance may not be viable since doing so cripples your build. I actually made a video on this um, probably about a week and a half back now talking about this very fact. So what do they say from here? Proposal for an improvement to the system. The anti-duplication system ignores any gear you currently have equipped when checking whether you currently own an item. Pros, this would make it easier to farm for improved versions of your currently equipped gear. Cons, the hunt for unique items could become a little longer again as your currently equipped gear wouldn't trigger the anti-duplication system i.e. 8 items would be added to the do not reroll pool. I mean I see what they are saying here and I'd probably say right now with the amount of time most of us have spent playing the game and most of us not actually missing too many legendaries I think the pros do outweigh the cons here but let me know your opinion on this down below. Note. As this is a global and invisible backend system, there is no way to turn it on or off on a player by player basis. A pick and choose your own reward option is also not feasible within the design of the game. Such a change wouldn't be present in our current patch, but it could potentially be worked into the patch thereafter. Hmm, that is interesting. Now my thoughts on a pick and choose your own reward, I feel with the right incorporation, a system as such could be good but I don't really ever want it to be the case of I pick the exact reward every single time I do or achieve something within the game because it actually takes away what this game is supposed to be it's supposed to grind for that beautiful loot if you can pick out rewards that grind is gone personally I think dedicated loot pools would be a much easier solution than rather just handing everybody gear for instance certain expeditions rewarding certain item pieces the time one spire offering shotguns boomtown offering offering helmets, chem plant offering leg armor or increased chances of said items. I mean a grind still needs to be there and like I said handing people things on a plate is not good for the longevity of the game. But yes guys let me know your thoughts on this down below. But I do think the um, anti-duplication system would be improved in a manner of ways if the system does ignore your currently equipped gear. So they go on to state here's what you can look forward to as part of the upcoming patch. Improved and faster Xbox signing process. Improved matchmaking to reduce the chance of matchmaking with an AFK player. Players that are AFK not interacting with the game for more than two minutes will be automatically removed from the matchmaking queue. That's great. Interacting with NPCs or configuring skills, mods or builds is not considered AFK behavior through being inactive for two minutes plus while being in menus or dialogue options is. Improve the invisibility of Broodmother's Surge area of effect attack, the Blue Flames. Fixed a bug whereby a scrap grenade would stop working after a cinematic or when rejoining a session. Resolved an issue with a techno match that's Borealis set and changed its description to match its new behaviour. The new description is 
increased damage on throws and enemies by X. Also, critical hit damage is increased by Y for all party members for Z seconds after cold snap usage. The old description was increased weapon damage on throws and enemies by X. Also, critical hit damage is increased by Y for all party members for Z seconds after cold snap usage. Fix their bug that could cause Trixie's Hunter Prey to get stuck on activating. Fix their bug whereby bleed status from the armor mod Bloody Crush would not be inflicted on enemies hit with the Gravity Leap skill. Fix the bug whereby the Devastator's Blood Donation class node wouldn't work if the player didn't have other active skill life leech nodes or mods. Clarify the description of the Revenous Locust mod. Fix the bug whereby dismantling an item might not have displayed the mod preview. Fix an issue that would cause the in sync accolade to not properly unlock for client players. Fix an issue that could cause players to not get the proper reward if they completed an expedition during the final second of the reward tier of a bug and crash fixes. The patch will also include the below tweak, which can be considered a small rebalance. Please note that this is just a small tweak that required cold work and was already ready to be rolled into this patch. Our next patch after this one is intended to have more buffs for all classes. Rebalance, change the Pyromancer's healthy lifestyle mod and change its description to match its new behavior. This change should improve survivability while channeling this skill. The new description is, Phaser Beam boosts your health regeneration X for the skill duration. The old description was phaser beam boosts your health regeneration by X for Y seconds after the skill ends. And there we have it guys. I'm not going to lie, I did think this patch would introduce or speak more so about the changes coming to those classes like they say at the end just there. That will be in their next patch. So we'll see about that guys. But yes, that's what we have for the Thursday dev news for Outriders. And guys, the end of the video has arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Outriders, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully I will see you on that next one.